If you've been paying any attention when you've gone to the supermarket recently, you will have noticed an abundance of British flags, especially as some have been pointed out very clearly on food that is not grown in Britain, such as British bananas, um, plums, well not plums, uh, you know, basically tropical fruit and other items that when you look more closely at the packaging, basically say were not even grown here and not even made here. So this proves to be an absolute absolute hilarity in fact there has been an actual good article recently in the um in the national farmers union and there was a guy in there who was passionately pro-brexit but admitted that brexit's got its problems for the farming industry and he's going to cause huge problems he then went on to say something very interesting that because of all these new trade deals this would open the uk market to a flood of very cheap foreign imports which we've always said from the start was going to be a massive problem for british producers and ultimately if the government wants to protect british producers it would have to introduce some form of protectionism bring in some sort of regulation but as i've said before we are being run by free market fundamentalists at the moment that is who these brexiteers are to their core and as a result they do not want to do anything like that of the sort they would rather flood britain with cheap foreign products than actually help homegrown producers and ultimately at the end this will cost britain jobs and as we've often said one of the best worst case scenarios for brexit less exports less investment less jobs smaller economy and ultimately no one voted for that no one at all so uh before we jump into uh, the article today please do remember to hit the uh like share and subscribe button and of course down below there is a link to my patreon page and a one-off donation link called buy me a coffee where you can well buy me a coffee and like i've always said thank you very much for all the support you all give me so on with today's article and this comes from the new european and its title is the truth about by british so there has been a post brexit trend extolling uh, exhorting shall we say food shoppers to buy british but just how feasible is it and is it necessarily a good thing it's not just food on the buy british facebook group Recent requests for advice on UK sourced homemade goods include everything from uh, leisure batteries to Lancashire custom sofas. No, I didn't even know uh, what leisure batteries were either. Mostly, they are a power source for mobile homes. Food, though, is, uh, is, uh, is as it so often is, has become the foremost uh, application in the new surge towards supporting British industry. Since Brexit, there has been a Teutonic shift in consumerism as shoppers look to champion UK made goods, aware as they are perhaps of the additional costs of trading with Europe, of the benefits of contributing to the national economy and possibly also try to supplement national pride. Whatever the reason, this collective desire is plenty. Recently, there was concern on one Facebook group that Quaker Oats are apparently made in Dublin. Soon, other members were suggesting that the supermarket's own, vir own, vir own varieties, namely those produced by Aldi and Lidl, were, m were milled here on British shores and are apparently still smooth and creamy when stirred with water as with milk. Other social media posts celebrated the bag of granular sugar that displayed the words pow proudly grown in Britain on top of a Union Jack. One man shared a picture of a chocolate bar going as far to explain the fact that not only is it manufactured in Stoke-on-Trent, but also the work of a British-owned company. A double win there for, the British pe there for the British pride. And you would be right to say that supermarkets in Britain have long sold goods featuring Union Jack flags. They were es espoused a hugely uh, homely agricultural ideal when it comes to the idea of beef, of beef talking of Welsh lamb, and West Country beef. Local cheeses and English wines today are minimizing this output. There has been an increasing number of flags on packaging. Retailers of Aldi and Lidl, in a move maybe to counteract impressions that they are German and are relevant 
and are in reliance more on imports, have been heavier still with their, trumping, with their trumpeting, it seems. Both have pages de declaring and dedicated to British food on their websites, pledging to do more to buy from internal suppliers. Traditionally, this pandering of culinary, uh, of culinary culture has been firmly cast as a seasonal and artism, but is about to look, <coughs> but is about looking uh, to our closest countryside where fruit and vegetables are grown and are packed into handsome delivery boxes, and is about recognizing the tireless endeavors of farmers who bring us the, uh, the tenderest of steaks, and if not the Romanians who pick our summer strawberries, a job we only want to do on Saturday afternoons for fun. Running alongside this now, however, is the apparent shift towards British food, not just for its cultural re relevance, not only as ethical, sustainable choice, but as a distinct, robust lifestyle choice, reflecting a pro-Brexit stance. The link is very evident from, this, from the discussion sites extorting people to buy British. Sorry, extolling people to buy British. And it might turn those off who identify as Remainers, but, ult but, but it's ultimately a good thing. After all, when it comes to sustainability, limiting uh, food miles and making the most of our lust pastures sought after since before the Roman Empire are only good. Yes, we should be elevating our food sector, which has, after all, recent decades been evolving, diversifying and improving in quality. And, as the pandemic has shown, there is much to be said for sh short supply lines. But just as far, but just how can the buy British extillations get us? If we applied it to all our purchases, would we have the food to get by? In short, no. We would run out by August, according to experts. The National Farmers Union says that we are just over sixty percent efficient, and that is taking it generally. Um, talking generally, when it comes to vegetables, we grow less than fifty percent of what we consume. And fruit is even less. We produce just 15% of what we eat. For an island nation, being able to feed our population is absolutely crucial. The, NUN, the NUF president, uh, 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 Maldine, uh, Maldine Batters, said uh, recently, she said, even as a global trading nation, shocks can expose fragilities in any reliance on imports. And, as, uh, an ex and we all experience the impact during this during lockdown. Imports play a crucial role in our food system. We buy our own selfish, our own selfish, uh, self self sufficiency. We must pay more attention by uh, must be paid more more attention to by the government. It is stagnating. We sit now at only sixty four percent self self sufficiency, having fallen by over seventy five percent in the mid eighties. And there are lots of reasons for this fall. Granted, some of them are down to cheaper goods, such as Danish bacon and Polish apples being shipped in, and there are arguments to suggest that concentrating on British pork and apples would be a positive repositioning of resources. But, since the 1980s, British food systems have also become a lot more adventurous. French uh, camembert is basically now a staple, and the slices of, <coughs> slices of Iberico ham are hardly luxuries. We should not, uh, probably not regress. And farmer and author Joe Stanley says that the, he has, there is to, has to be a balance. Is buying British fundamentally better just because it's grown here? Doesn't make it more sustainable. There is lots to be proud of when it comes to British produce. We have the highest welfare standards in the world and some of the highest meat quality when it comes to sustainability. Let's hope people buy British, shop local and support our industry. British customers have been traditionally concerned with price, which is more uh, an American mindset than a European one. So there's a lot to celebrate if people are paying more attention to food. But there's also huge shame that the by British mindset of this Union Jack patriotism is getting tied up with nationalism. The, the petty flag we see our government use is uh, trying to alter things. We are having these conversations about buying British and at the same time we are standing, uh, staying, uh, standing into an unfortunate nationalistic territory. We are witnessing the toxification of a British brand. Stanley says Europe is important as ever, both when importing and exporting food. We absolutely need to nature to nurture trade links, he says. There is re and there's a reason America is so desperate to sign a trade deal with us, because we're a wealthy nation that imports lots of food. And that's taken generously 
to foster relationships with our European partners to get the food that we have. List Trust thinks, okay, Kuwait eats a lot of lamb. Let's go there. Europe is full of wealthy people and we should want to sell them our food. I'm sure people don't want to go back to a, uh, a diet of potatoes and cabbage. We are a culinary backwater. Everyone expects us to be able to access a decent range of food. Surely we should be able to buy seasonal and be local. But this cannot be, uh, be achieved realistically. <coughs> so another farmer said that the buy British discourse is largely positive. After all, he says last year, it was one of the best bits of years for lamb, which was up one pound per kilo. I think it's a really good thing. People are getting behind British agriculture. It's about bloody time. We have lots of bridges to cross. And we should be adding to it. Salad, fruit and veg. We need, uh, we need to be building that British economy on what we're growing and eating. In the bigger picture, we'll be more sustainable and more seasonal with no added cost. And we should have strawberries in December and French beans from Kenya. But Wynne Jones adds that buying British sentiment is a welcome one. So too is continuing to nurture links with Europe. Diversifying uh, is good for food, and we have to ask ourselves, when it comes to cheaper food, how is that produced? Do we want avocados brought in from Mexico, where the population uh, is causing problems? Yes, but at some point, uh, uh, yes, uh, but yes, uh, as some who put Welsh lamb into Europe, I do not want trade to stop. That's one of the best products in the world. That's why it's imported. And yes, I work with, uh, it works both ways, with French camembert and Spanish ham and wine. But carrots, there's no reason at all why our carrots shouldn't be British. I was, uh, I was a Remainer. I want to stay in Europe. But I'm not Nigel Farage screaming about buying British. I'm also a farmer who cares about the environment. And there's a valid point to be made, however it's dressed up. So, when it comes to carrots, we're pretty actually good. The British Carrot Growers Association says that the UK grows over 800,000 tonnes of carrots annually, and it's self-sufficient for over 11 months of the year. Patterns get a little more, bit, a bit more drastic when it comes to food that favours warmer a locale. The British tomato production amounts to over 29,000 metric tonnes a year, which is about a fifth of the total volume sold in the country in that time frame. We need to import over 40,000 tonnes of fresh tomato tomatoes every year to meet the demand. The retail value of British tomatoes is around 190 million out of a total re retail market worth about 7,400 million. So we need to get a heck of a lot more polytunnels um, to get anywhere near self-sufficiency. Our pastas and salads would suffer for quite some time, never mind the investment required. Sheffield University professor Duncan Cameron is the co-director of the Institute of Sustainable Food and he says we should be thinking about the short the sort of food system we want rather than how the system is uh, how, how, rather than how the system is acquired personally and academically I think the issue of selfish self sufficiency is a classic classic case of the wrong question we think and talk of little England and the quasi nationalism in relation to food but uh, but that might be present. But with sustainability and food security, we need to think about what sort of diet we want. So that's this current situation really with it. I mean, ultimately we've seen this and we've seen the British food industry saying how much it needs that access to the European markets. And I 100% agree, we need access to those European markets. Us being cut off from them is absolutely ridiculous and later on later on in the year when we see these new um barriers come up not just in northern ireland but actually into the uk itself then we too could actually be seeing empty shelves in our supermarkets because now those checks are in place now those products actually have to start getting there so while I do agree that there is some part to buy British, I do not agree with what we started off with the article saying, and I'm sure you've all seen it yourselves, of people extolling the virtues of buying British bananas. Because I, for one, you know, will be going out, I'm sure, into the Yorkshire banana fields, picking bananas at the weekend. You know, it, 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 it gets absolutely stupid and ridiculous. But it is a conversation that I think needs to be had. And I think 
removing the toxic nationality from the con con uh, conversation is actually a conversation worth having and asking ourselves, is buying British actually a good thing? So, as always, uh, thank, you much for, uh, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you all next time.